listening to Resist and Restore, a podcast with the Circle of Hope Pastures, where we're extending the table of our dialogue. I'm Johnny Rashid. I'm Julie Hoke. I'm Rachel Sensenig. And I'm Ben White. And it's so good to be together again. Yeah, this is a this is an emergency meeting of the podcast. This is two weeks in a row we're doing this. Yeah, normally we meet every other week. Now we're going every week because we want to connect with you in this time of isolation. And we want to encourage you um, in your isolation because it is an actual discipline to stay isolated uh, when we're eager to connect and eager to serve and eager to be around each other. But I'm, I'm convinced that it's the right thing to do. So I hope that this is a, a, uh, an encouragement to you wherever you are. Yeah, and all over the internet, there's been great ways that people are, are inventing to connect. There, there's definitely some good in this mess with people recognizing this difficulty and rising to the challenge with their creativity and their smiling faces. I think it's pretty great, and I'm glad to be part of that wave, right, y'all? Yeah, That's right. Yes. Hey, it's time for Talk Back, but this week it's Show Back because we had a picture uh, request on our, our Circle of Hope Daily Prayer, which is circleofhope.net slash daily prayer. Rachel, who wrote the entry, was asking us to take pictures of cherry blossoms or flowers or little tiny things in nature. Why were you having us do that, Rachel? Ah, uh, because I think seeing the beauty of creation is sometimes the best motivator to care for it to realize really our our true nature in Christ as like life givers and life nurturers. And I think it just nourishes our soul to our souls to get outside. Um, of course, we have to be really careful about how we do that right now. Um, please maintain social distance. <laughs> we want people to stay alive through this pandemic. But we were urging people to get outside and find something beautiful that's blooming, like the cherry blo- many of the cherry blossom trees around the city right now, and share it with us so we can be encouraged by the beauty of the earth and motivated to um, nurture more life around us. And you're saying, Rachel, that when we go outside and we see and appreciate nature, it actually encourages us to care for it, and Christians should care for the creation somehow? Oh my goodness! Absolutely, we're softball. We're, yeah, <laughs> well, not really. You know, Christians aren't known for caring for creation. You know, so yeah. yeah. I mean, I won't. I don't need to go on and on about the way that creation really needs some attention and care right now. There's huge environmental problems on the planet, but we are part of the restoration and the recreation, and we can do that even now, in the midst of a quarantine. Yeah, and I, I remember you, you quoted Romans 8, that the earth itself is groaning mm-hmm. and that birth is coming. There's this labor image in Romans 8 that it's inevitable that the new creation is going to come. And so when we take a picture uh, or when, even when we appreciate a picture that someone took of like this birthing process of the flowers going from bud to beautiful pink, there's a celebration of that inevitable making things right of the new creation that is coming and you can count on it. Yes. Ben, I love that you brought the birth in there because it's true that once birth starts, there's no stopping it. So what what really struck me about that scripture yesterday was even though creation is groaning and it's, you know, and it's in pain and I I, I always feel that. I think the, the plants have been so confused for years. Even though that's happening, the spirit of God is groaning with us too, Paul points out. Mm. And mm-hmm. so God is moving this this thing along for new birth. Something good is going to come out of all this. Yes, you can count on that. And so it's weird on a podcast, right, to do a, a show, a show back. So check it out on our on our website, circlehope.net, where we often post this. Maybe you get it. You're getting it right now through your iTunes or whatever podcast feed you use. You'll want to gonna want to look at circleofhope.net and see the actual post because we're going to post some of these pictures that I'm now going to show you all for the first time. Y'all ready to see some of these pictures that people posted in response to uh, Rachel's request on the daily prayer? Yes. Yeah, let's see them. Okay, so click over to this link here on uh, Facebook here. Um, this one, Johnny asked his, his people, hey, take a photo of a cherry blossom today. 
and there are some responses here. And at the time, uh, by the way, I did not know what a cherry blossom was. <laughs> I grew to learn this. Johnny, how did how did you like? How did you end up not knowing what a cherry blossom was? Like your family just didn't care about it? I know what many, many things are in an abstract sense, but I often don't know what they are in a material sense. Johnny, so you have th- to go to Julie's school of plant care. She has taught me a lot. She's a master. No, girl. I mean, I know, I know you made fun of me for asking Rachel the question, but getting outside to appreciate creation in order to care for it is not like a... Uh, automatic thing that I do or feel like doing particularly. So I do abstractly know what a cherry blossom is, but it was helpful that my friends showed me what it was. They were helping yes. you. Yeah. 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 I needed so help. So check out this one right here of uh, on Johnny's post of the magnolia tree. Do mm. you see that one above the house? Gorgeous. So pretty. I love magnolias so much. Mm-hmm. There's one in my neighborhood that I keep walking past every day. I make my route that direction because I want to see it. They are they're just breathtaking. Did it open up yet? Yeah. Yep. It's so dramatic when they do because their petals are so big. Yes. Yeah, check out the magnolias, y'all. I just particularly love these these plants and trees being in the midst of the city. You know, even though I grew up in the country, I just love that I can go to my corner store, Guido's, and get some groceries, and, and there's this giant piece of natural creation blooming out in front of it, like in the midst of all, of all this concrete. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, maybe on this, we're, we're meeting on Google Meet. Maybe I can just share my screen with you and you can see what I'm seeing. Let me try that real quick so I can I can guide you through a few more of these. Yeah, I can do that. Check this out, y'all. Is this a magnolia too? On the sunset? No, that's not a magnolia. I don't know what no. that one is. What's those? What are those little white flowers? Because they don't smell good. Anyone know? No, I don't know. I don't. The bad smell is how I know spring is here. I think that's that's a type of cherry blossom tree. Oh, is it really? I think Look so. Look at this one with the white flowers and the sunset behind it. Do you see this? Hashtag Paul Cole. Oh, snap. Paul Cole getting the shout out. It's beautiful. This is beautiful. That is a, just a fantastic picture. Put that in National Geographic, please. One more, one more. How about this one? This one's from Rachel herself, right? right? Oh, this is the one that you were talking about in front of Guido's? Yep. Oh, this is fantastic mm-hmm. on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Oh, my god. It gosh. is amazing, too. I mean... It's right against the sky. The sky is, like, popping blue behind it with those, like, perfectly cloudy clouds, you know? <laughs> and uh, then this pink, pink, pink tree that's not overladen. Sometimes cherry blossom trees are so full that you can't see the branches, but this one has the branches. And then I, what I really like about the photo, too, is it's got a couple of wires in it, too. Mm-hmm. City wires. Mm-hmm. All your skyscapes have wires in them if you live in Philadelphia, y'all. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm looking at this, and, you know, we're in the middle of this pandemic, this plague, this damned plague. And I am honestly, in, in this real-time moment, experiencing um, hope because life is going on. And creation thrives still. And for a moment, we realize, even as we are the, uh, the pinnacle of God's creation, that that doesn't necessarily center us in all of it. And that kind of Wait, humble... Can I clarify that? When you say we're the climax of God's creation, you're talking about the Genesis narrative and, and humanity was the last thing that God made? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, the climax, the ending. Mm-hmm. And thank you for the, for the clarification. But decentering ourselves as as we kind of isolate and see how creation around us is still springing forward, for me, is a sign of hope that this too will pass. And so new life, new beginnings, resurrection is happening right here in Lent, in quarantine during this time. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I loved the assignment from the daily prayer to go and do it. I actually, um, I put it in my my phone as a reminder because I... I, the way that I use the daily prayer is I read it first thing in the morning before, you know, it's kind of like my opening for the day. And then, you know, I, I didn't go outside right then and take a picture, but I liked that it was extended throughout the day. And I and I actually I was like, oh, shoot, I haven't taken my picture. So I like ran to the here. Check this one out. This is the last picture I want to show you. This is the one that I took. And these little purple flowers in my side yard oh. smell so good. Julie, do you know what those are called? They're those hy- are hyacinth. 
Hyacinth. Oh my gosh, they they just smell fantastic. Mm-hmm. I did some weeding in my front yard yesterday, and my face was in the hyacinth and the daffodils as I was weeding, and it was yeah, it's it's amazing this the fragrance. May it be so. May your may your nostrils be filled with beautiful fragrances. <laughs> Uh, that's our show back. Uh, you probably are going to get the best look at all this stuff. Not online. Just go outside, y'all. The, yes. the, the assignment continues after you listen to this podcast or even while you're listening to it right now. Go outside and, and breathe some of that beauty. <laughs> I just want to take the time now to thank you for listening to our podcast. We're really blessed by the listeners that we have, and we're encouraged to be doing something together. Um, if you want to help us out, go to circleofhope.net slash sharing and just throw in a few bucks. We, that helps us make the podcast. That helps pay for our staff and get it out there for people to listen. And I know things are tight now, so if you can't share, another thing that you can do to help others listen to our podcast is by giving us a positive review. So wherever you listen to the podcast, Tell them how much you like it, and that'll help others find us, too. And if you want to talk back to us and uh, share an idea or a thought or a question, make a comment, email us at resistandrestorepodcast at circleofhope.net. And and I just want to let you know a little bit about some things that are happening. Um, We're still a thriving community, even during this quarantine. And we're in Lent right now. And the conclusion of Lent is the final week is called Holy Week. It's an embodied drama. It really is. And we've done it very dramatically in the past. And, but since we can't be together to walk with Jesus towards the cross and we're separated by this quarantine, we, we were tasked with creating, how do we make an embodied communal process with our people? And so we have a, a way to uh, pray that everybody can participate in throughout the day that we're working on for the final week. And it, and it follows in the Benedictine hours. And so, and it'll culminate in an online event at the end of uh, each evening, um, starting on April 5th. So if you want to participate in that, you can go to circleofhope.net slash daily prayer or daily prayer deeper starting on Palm Sunday, uh, which is the fifth. And you can see how we'll pray using these hours during the day. And at the end of the night, there'll be a broadcast and a time for worship as a body together. So that's one way that we're extending the drama of Holy Week. Additionally, we'll continue to meet online on Sundays to worship. We've been really getting a lot of people connected um, and gathered because people are thirsting to connect and to worship God together. And if you want to do that, go to circleofhope.net slash online meeting. We start at five on Sundays. And this week we have an opportunity for a dialogue afterwards. So if you want to get in on that, just send us your email address and we'll get you logged into a group and then we'll have a dialogue afterwards. So thanks for listening again. So for this next section of our podcast, I'm going to uh, interview a songwriter in our community, in our community circle of hope named Gina Master. She's a compassionate person. She has a big heart. 
And she is a very talented artist. When I listen to her sing, she has this haunting voice uh, that, that kind of uh, overtakes you. So she has this beautiful voice and she writes in a way that just really breaks into your heart. So I love her songwriting and she's been a source of joy for me um, in terms of friendship, but in terms of uh, leading me to worship too. So I'm really excited to uh, share our conversation with you. So welcome, Gina. Thanks. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got connected to Circle of Hope? Yes, um, it was way back in the day, I guess uh, about 12 years ago. My husband, Mikey, and I had just moved to the city and we wanted to find a community. We checked out Circle of Hope. We were like, maybe we'll go back, maybe we won't. But we had met you there. Oh, you met me. And Yes, you were a very <laughs> eager college student and wanted us to come to your cell. We were like, ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. But then you just came by our door, knocked on it, and we're like, I'm going to cell. You coming with me? And we couldn't say no. And then uh, we just kept going. That's great. Um, I kind of forgot that story, so I'm glad, I'm glad it worked out. And I'm glad that during my college age, um, I didn't scare you off because that could have, <laughs> that could have happened too. Um, uh, you had so many feelings. It was great. So you've been a songwriter for some time and you you were even a songwriter before you joined us too. How do you think creativity and songwriting intersects with your faith in general, mm -hmm. but also with Circle of Hope? Talk to us about how it's helped cultivate your faith, but also how it fits in with kind of how we do things in mm -hmm. Circle. Um, I think as far as it uh, integrating into my faith, I think, you know, if my faith or my theology or way of seeing the world or of seeing God, my music is shaped by that because that's how th those things, those ideas of who God is and what the world is like, they're always, you know, growing and changing within me. And as they do, I think my music often reflects that um, because my music and my songwriting is just for me the way that I kind of like personally mm -hmm. process my life and my thoughts and what current events. Um, and the way that it's intersected with Circle of Hope has really been a beautiful and like really great creative opportunity because um, instead of just like individual artistic expression, um, it gives me this opportunity to write something for a group of people. Sure. And so to kind of like look, be part of this, um, you know, living organism and um, try and write something that would be reflective for most of us, that would be true for most of us, that would we would feel like we can sing out. That's been really fun. Excellent. Yeah, it's been fun for us too. Um, when you think about how you're inspired for songwriting, uh, who or what inspires you? I think normally it's just life. It's just what's happening. It's just what I'm thinking about. It's what I'm reading. It's what I talk about in a cell or whatever. It's just whatever's happening, whatever's in my mind, in my body, it is what ends up coming out. So do you think that um, a song will come out of this period of quarantine that we're in? Um, sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah, I have a, there's a lot of nights I have free, you know, to do nothing. So I'll probably be writing a lot of music. You know, it is such an, it, now that we're self-isolating, it's, it's, um, I do think that there is opportunities for new growth and new development um, and even creativity. So I'm looking forward to uh, what kind of art people make during this time. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is a... Um reminder of our need for one another and kind of heightens the awareness of the, you know, myth of, um, or the hyper individuality totally, that we totally. all kind of buy into. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that that makes way for a lot of good art. So when you think of your songs, um, you write songs that people have used for worship. Some people might call them Christian songs. Do you make a distinction between songs for worship and songs for um, Christians even versus other kinds of songs. How do you work that out? Um, I don't love making that distinction in my mind or I don't naturally make it, you know, when th sure there is a distinction when it comes to like, like technically like how you would write or craft a song for a community. And the, those songs that I share with the community are different maybe than the songs that I just write for myself or whatever. But yeah, I don't really make that distinction. Okay. I, if, it, if it's if it's true and it expresses um, people's feelings, then it's 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 a song. 
But you, I mean, I, I've seen you write, and when, and when you write and you offer a song, you actually want, you think of other people and how they might experience it too. And so in some ways you're serving your audience when you write and not just expressing yourself. For sure, for sure. Um, I'm just saying I think that doesn't that doesn't necessarily make it. I don't make the Christian, non-Christian distinction. It's just music. You know? Yeah, I think that's a thing that uh, Christian record labels made up. Uh. Totally, and they make so much money doing it. <laughs> Um, so I know you're working on a new record and you're, wor- and you're doing it with Circle of Hope Audio Art. For those that mm-hmm. don't know, you can listen to all of our original music at circleofhopeaudioart.bandcamp.com. Um, I think you're working on our fifth record. Can you share? And it's just your music, right? Correct, yeah. Can you share about what themes you dive into on that record? Um, I, think the, I think it's still coming together you know because it it, these songs i write them when i'm you know with myself thinking of the community so it's kind of like i plant a seed and then um the community takes it and we sing it and it becomes like its own thing and then when you take it into a studio then you're adding you know musicians and they all make their own sounds and so it's kind of like becoming i can't totally see it clearly it's like sprouting from the ground but i'm not sure um what's going to grow out of the sprouts or something I think I could say, though, that uh, there's definitely themes of uh, the belief that we are not separate from God or from one another or from the earth, that all those things are inextricably bound to each other. And then if, you know, we are bound to one another, then what does that look like? How do we live compassionately and sure. carry each other's burdens and things like that? So communi- we are linked with God, we're one with God, and we're also one with each other and one with creation. And this kind of a community that God is making inspires some of your music and even this record. Yeah, I would say that. One of my favorite things about the music you write is that you refer to God as mother or you use what we sometimes call as the divine feminine. That could be unusual for some people that aren't used to that. Why is it meaningful to you? Why do you choose to describe God that way? I think for me, um, as a woman, it's become important for me to identify with God in a feminine way. I think for me, in my own faith or spirituality, it feels important to move towards like becoming one with God and seeing that I am not separate. And in order for me to see that I'm kind of made in God's image, um, I think I need to widen my imagination of God and kind of like change my picture. I think um, in my mind, God is just automatically male and then Jesus was male. So I just have this a very male idea of who God is. And so to kind of expand my imagination um, and give myself different metaphors to work with has been really helpful for me to feel connected to God. And um, definitely in becoming a mother and kind of sitting with all those metaphors um, and feeling that kind of like desire for that divine feminine mothering thing makes me want to use those metaphors they are helpful for me just as a mother cannot forget the child she is born god will not forget us our bodies come from her shows in our love God will not forget us even in our bleakest hour the mother's love remains even when we turn You told me a story about how you, uh, during one season of Advent, Advent is the season before Christmas, you encountered this once again because of your personal uh, experience with God and with Jesus during this time. Can you share about that? 
it was a few events ago and, you know, normally Circle of Hope kind of offers this metaphor for us to all collectively work with of like, how is Jesus being born in you or where do you need Jesus to be born? And I felt so overcome with this desire of like, I just want Jesus to be born a baby girl. Like I need God to come to humanity as a, as a female. I think in maybe particularly a time in our culture where we're getting a heightened awareness for the toxicity that can, that is in the patriarchy or that can exist in uh, male leadership or whatever, totally. that it felt, it felt important that I kind of like imagine things differently and kind of out of that sort of prayer came this experience that I had where I felt like I, I kind of met or was able to expand my imagination to see the divine feminine or experience that, that kind of feeling. I think that I really appreciate you sharing that. I think it's really helpful for people to hear that there are women writing songs and people experiencing God um, through a feminine lens, or you might even say a feminist lens. When we read the Bible, we often see masculine Im images for God, masculine pronouns for God. And in my view, that's actually the Bible writers relating to God in their own context um, and not necessarily prescribing how we might. And if you are a student of the Bible, you'll also notice that there's a lot of feminine and mothering images, even in the text, too. And so I do think we have a kind of the liberty to relate to God that way. And I think the particularity of Jesus in becoming a human to relate to us gives us even more license to relate to God how we need to, because God chose to relate to us right, right as, just as we were. And I think, I think you're really channeling what I would call as a really authentically Christian way to worship God. So thank you very much for that. What, what advice would you give if people are listening to this now and they're, they're, they're songwriters themselves, uh, they're uh, burgeoning songwriters, what's a piece of advice or wisdom that you can share with them? To definitely not be a perfectionist to just write, just let whatever is coming out of you, like just let it come out of your body and don't write it to be perfect or to sound a certain way or feel a certain way. Just write it to write the next one and then write that one to write the next one and just keep writing, writing, writing. Excellent. And is it true when this record comes out, hopefully by the end of this year, that you're, you're going to take the record since it's all your music with a band and perform a show for us? It's true. That's exciting. So keep when 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 we get through this time and we can actually get together to worship and to uh, enjoy music in a common place, Gina will offer some of her songs to us. Yeah, maybe a live stream show would be cool too. Just putting that little nugget in your head in case you want to do that. I mean, maybe we'll still be quarantined. We'll see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so a few more questions before we're done. Sometimes I hear like uh, artists that are on the radio. And they often get asked, what do you do when you hear your song on the radio? You're not on the radio yet, but we use your songs in worship. What's it like when you hear your song being used, being uh, used in a liturgy by a different worship leader when you're in attendance, when you're worshiping with us? What's that experience like? Mm -hmm. um, I love it so much. I love that... Um, I have something I can give to the community and then the community makes it its own. So like the song always sounds, you know, a little different than I wrote. There's like different instruments. It's sung with a different voice. It's like become, and that's something. okay with you. I love it. It's really satisfying. And I, I enjoy that. Um, it's, there's some anonymity in that it's, it's not like I have to be up there giving it. It's like, no, nope, it just became part of us. I like that. It's part of the body. I love that yeah. too. You know, I love the uh, humility that you demonstrate um, just by that posture. Would you like other churches to worship using your music? Sure. Um, when people, when it, I can write something and put it out there and it connects with anybody in any kind of way, I think that's great. So if you're listening and you like some of Gina's music, Gina's saying, go ahead and use it in your worship, you know, yeah. especially if you're looking for those songs that connect to, uh, God as mother, divine feminine. And they're not very common in commercial Christian music, I would say. Gina gives you that opportunity. So how can they listen to your stuff? How can they stay connected to you and listen to your music? I'm not great at self-promotion or having an online presence, but there's some really old stuff <laughs> on Bandcamp. I have been writing, uh, I have kind of like a different setup that I've been writing new stuff with. Maybe I'll put some 
some out in the next year or two. Um, and then the Circle Pope album will hopefully be out this year. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you, you'll be able to listen to that online, and we'll link uh, Gina and Mikey's band camp on, in the show description, too. Well, thanks so much for uh, the time to talk. Thanks, Johnny. I'm glad to have you on the show, and it's it's fun to be connected. Even when we're in this time of social isolation, it's really good to see you. Yeah, you too. All right, take care. Bye. We are not, we are not, we are not separate. From the earth, from each other, from the divine. We are not, we are not, we are not separate. From the earth, from each other, from the divine. We are one, we are one. We all want to get In this last segment, we want to talk about what is nourishing our souls. This is uh, like spiritual show and tell. Um, and, and we want to share it with you, uh, hoping that it will nourish your soul too, especially during this time. So what do you all have to share this week? Well, my soul was really nourished on Monday night, Julie, uh, when my friend Ness Espinoza, who is a fellow Anabaptist Jesus follower here in the city. Um, He got a bunch of church leaders from all kinds of different churches, um, and not just churches, but mission organizations and even some city officials together online to talk about how to care for the most vulnerable in our city during this pandemic. And Mm. um, it was just really refreshing to connect with all these different people who are um, serving and loving God and caring for the least of these, uh, uh, of which we are part. But just to feel the strength in the church um, across the board that Circle of Hope was part of and to feel the unity growing among us in response to this crisis was really beautiful. Mm. You said there was like at least 20 people on that call. Yep, right? more, th- more than 20, yep. I don't even know how that works on these uh, conference calls. <laughs> I'm learning too. <laughs> My soul is being nourished by... Uh, TikTok videos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm like. I'm. I'm so old. Uh, you know that uh, TikTok is still novel to me. Um, but I'm. De- I, de- I got on all the social media now. I'm, Wait, I'm if TikTok is not. If TikTok is novel to you now, it means you're old, huh? People have been doing TikTok for a long time. Yeah, TikTok mm-hmm. is. I mean, at least a year old. Mm-hmm. And in the Man. internet, that's very old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The older uh, I get, the more boomer I feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but anyways, uh, the t- the I, I saw a couple of TikTok videos, especially with like it, it was it was the parents, honestly, that 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 warmed my heart. They were getting in there with their kids, love it, and they were the thing that a lot of people do on TikTok videos. It's not universally the, all the same, but you know you do choreographed dances that are like fifteen seconds long. <laughs> you know, so like anyone can do a little routine. And so the song's playing and then, you know, someone, someone's doing this and someone's doing that. And then like, they can't uh, see you know, ben. they're doing it in unison. <laughs> and my friends, my friends who are parents that are, that are getting in there with their kids and just like their, the, their joy is shining through, oh, you know, man. just like my one friend's face as she was doing the moves with her kids and just getting into it, just looking and looking good too. Like, I, like, I want to see if I could do it. You oh, know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a kid that's into TikTok. My kid is nine years old. He's not into the social media yet. But uh, I wish that I had a 14-year-old so I could be on TikTok like, and not be weird. <laughs> <laughs> you should do because, your own. You really should. Because the joy is so real. Like uh-huh. The joy is there. I just see it on their faces. And, and, I, and I like the unlikely suspects that are on there. Mm-hmm. You know, My other friend did a TikTok video. I was like, what? You did a TikTok video and it was just, you know, just he didn't have to do anything. The fact that he's on there, like done. You just won the day, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that he even just made a 30 second video. Mm-hmm. So you're so we should get on it. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. You can, you can, there's lots of things to do. I'm yeah. just saying that it's, it's bringing me joy and it's nourishing my soul to see yeah. my friends uh, just 
embodying their 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 fun and their joy yeah. right there and it's getting into me it's a reminder to have mm-hmm. fun mm-hmm. yep mm-hmm. yep what's nourishing my soul is a lot more serious than that um but i'm glad for those reminders to have fun too um i was actually reading some writings by this this young jewish woman edie hilsom um, my spiritual director shared this with me and it was nourishing my soul because she like she died at the age of 29 in auschwitz um and she she left behind a diary and like seven over 70 letters um i think more letters are still being found and she articulates this remarkable experience of God in the midst, obviously, of horrific circumstances. And it was encouraging to me, first of all, just to get out of my head and this moment in time to consider who she was and what she lived through and and what others have lived through. Um, and the ways that she, you know, she did not abandon her faith. Her her faith was actually deepened and enlivened during that time. And that was, it's just so encouraging. I'm looking here for a quote maybe to share. Uh, she, one thing she talks about, she kept on proclaiming her faith in God and in the beauty of God's creation, which actually fits with this uh, conversation today, despite everything. Um, and she says, to be truly inwardly happy to accept God's world and to enjoy it without turning away from all the suffering there is. Even if you live in an attic and have nothing but dry bread to eat, life is still worth living. Mm. There's so much to relish. Life is rich, even though it has to be conquered from minute to minute. Mm. And she wrote that March, March 24th, 1941. Mm. Even so, if life has to be conquered from minute to from minute. From minute to I minute. Love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll give you, I'll, I'll leave you with this encouragement. Um, it's not too encouraging, but it's a little quirky. Uh, some of you know I'm a, I'm a home cook, and people are cooking more now, which is really interesting. Um, and I like that. I'm not cooking particularly more, um, just about the same. But now I feel a sense of camaraderie with my brothers and sisters as they're cooking. So I'm not going to give you instructions on how to make a souffle right now. But one thing you can do while you have the time is begin a sourdough starter. <laughs> now, here's what you can do, seriously. And I know flowers in demand now. So um, following the advice of a cook that I follow on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram at Johnny's Food, J-O-N-N-Y, F-O-O-D on Instagram. Um, J-O-N-N-Y-S at food. It's Johnny's yes. Food, right? Yes, Johnny's Food. Um, Andrew Jangjagian, a chef that I follow, uh, works at Cooks Illustrated, has this idea to start a quarantine starter because it just uses a little bit of flour. Here's what you do. Um, just combine uh, about a tablespoon of flour, 10 grams, with 10 grams of water, which is two teaspoons of water, and mix that in and put it in a small container where there's a minimum of, of evaporation, and let that sit on top of your fridge or another warm place for three days. And then by the third day, you'll see some bubbles in activity because there's a whole community of microorganisms that are forming in there. And then what you do to refresh the starter is take a teaspoon, five grams of the starter, and put it into a new vessel with 10 more grams of flour and 10 more grams of water and save that, saving the old starter in case something goes bad. And then after the third day, do that every day for about two weeks. And then by the end of that, you'll actually have enough starter to leaven a whole loaf of bread. So in your isolation, do that quarantine starter. I love the idea. And it's just a, it's a rewarding way to uh, spend your time, if you ask me. I think and I want to try that. I think I, that, that seems achievable to me. And then you have delicious bread to eat. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, exactly. You are a ma- and hashtag quarantini starter. <laughs> You're a master chef, Johnny. I just want to throw in here too that um, if you are experiencing food shortage right now, there there are places around the city that are giving out food in in safe ways. And in Camden and South Jersey as well. Mm, yeah. Good. Good. The school district is having a pickup now, every three days. Um, if you need to take somebody food, the best way to do it is to leave it on their doorstep. 
but we're looking out for each other and we need to keep doing that. Yeah, and please, you can reach out to us on this podcast medium too if you're looking for help or looking for ideas for how to help people. Uh, we haven't said it enough in this episode, but reach out to us at resist and restore podcast at circleofhope.net. You can talk to us about the show. You can talk to us about your experiences with some of the stuff we're talking about. You can ask us questions. If you ask us a question, we might make it part of the talkback section at the beginning of our uh, show. But uh, we do want to hear from you. But we also definitely want to help care for you and help you care for others. So reach out to us that way if you don't have... Um, if you're not personally connected to us already, we, we still want to be connected to you. Well, thanks for listening to this episode. It's exciting to be together and to share this. I hope it encourages you. And I hope you feel better having listened to it. We'll see you next time. <laughs>